We're coming in hot with inspiring guests, witty banter, and colorful commentary for today's veterans and military community. This is the Tango Alpha Lima Podcast. They call me crazy because I'm facing all my giants. They try to scare me into thinking I can't fight it. They tell me I should never even think of trying. But that's just me. I'm going to live out in defiance. I am so excited. It's October in Los Angeles, a high of 90 for me today as the day of recording. Woo! I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. How's the weather where you are, Ashley Marie? It's perfect. Perfectly. Perfectly lovely. And they're going to they're gonna take that opportunity to repeat the mantra that you and Holly have been doing of the sweater weather. It's sweater weather. You guys sweater love that. You guys weather. love that so much. That um, SNL clip with uh, I, I'm aware I have TikTok. Uh, I don't have TikTok. And... I have Amazon too. I've seen it. Okay. Not uh, Amazon. Why am I saying familiar. that? Instagram. I have Instagram. I've seen it on Instagram because I don't put the TikTok on my phone. Well, that's good news for you. I'm not a 12 year old girl. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't TikTok either. I, I don't TikTok. I'm. I just know I don't Twitter and I don't TikTok. Those are T's I will me, not cross. I again, this is one of my pet peeves. When people and when people start um, a sentence with this is why starter end a sentence with this is why we can't get younger members. We're not on TikTok. Like really? Do you want do you want national making TikToks? You want to see the national commander doing a choreographed dance? I will say this. While we were at national convention, the polka escalator would have been an opportunity to get as many folks on there as possible, riding it up and down. And I'm telling you, that would have been a fun video because there are so many quirky legionnaires who would have just gotten down with that. Like It would have been so much fun. Well, then um, let's go back right now. I'm all about, listen, I have, I have floated this idea with some of our, our rascal riders is what I call it. And when we're at the convention, I love it. Cause like I've talked about Mario Kart. Call, whoa, 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 whoa. Did you just call them rascal riders? Yeah, no, I've listened. And I preface, I've had some conversations with folks who, you know, have electric, like the electric mobility. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. You know, we have Legion riders, we have rascal riders. And here's the thing. I say this very kindly. I've had this conversation with a, a really amazing group while I was at convention because they were like beeping and telling people to get out of the way, respectfully so, right? We got to make make sure we got to have the, the lane cleared. And I was joking around and I was asking folks, I'm like, you know, it's like, I really enjoy Mario Kart and there is just so many opportunities for fun Legion like videos. And I, I tell you this, someone was like, you know what? I'm going to go get some bananas. I'm going to start throwing peels everywhere. I'm going to peel out some of some of these folks. And I was like, could you imagine if we had turtle, like little fake, like stuffed turtle shells and like, like little star, like it would be so much fun. Like the American legionnaires that I hang out with have the best sense of humor. And the fact that they were You're willing. Welcome. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're welcome. <laughs> and I was just shocking on. And it was funny. I was like, well, what do we, what do we call ourselves? What, what would we call it? They're like, well, actually, we'd have to get you a scooter so you can, you know, pay like pay to play. <laughs> They're like, yeah, let's call it. We'll, we'll, we'll be like the rascal riders of Mario Kart. This was a legitimate conversation I had with Legionnaires at the convention. So for folks who think like, oh, we, Legionnaires don't have fun, like they're who we're all that? very aware. I nobody don't know. says nobody don't says know. that people who may not know what the Legion does. They think we're a bunch of drunks and that we all have fun. They, they <laughs> nobody <laughs> says Legionnaires don't have fun. <laughs> Yeah, no, we we not that. have fun and a lot of pop culture references. I was, it was a good okay. time. All anyway. right, that's not a segment, so we got to limit it to twenty eight minutes that you've taken talking about the rest of the writers. <gasps> I and love them. I love all of them. One of them is going to be offended and send us an uh, email at Tango Alpha Lima at Legion dot org if that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please, I love all of you. You're lovely. <laughs> all right. So right. let's Talk finally get into more. this show and please don't sing, but uh, get into mm. this mm. 
please get into this first story. It's a, it's an amazing little story. I, I like it. Yeah, uh, for many of us, this gentleman has probably been a part of the soundtrack of life. So the title of this article we're going to talk about today is The Time Johnny Cash Might Have Intercepted Secret Russian Codes. What? From MilitaryTimes.com. So before legendary country musician Johnny Cash became the man in black, he served during the Cold War as the man in blue with the U.S. Air Force. Ta-da! Clever. Way to be Air Force. Got Johnny Cash. Shortly after his marriage to his first wife, Vivian, Staff Sergeant Cash was sent to Landsberg, West Germany, where the rumor began that the young airman had intercepted and cracked a secret Russian code about the March 1953 death of Soviet Premier Leader Joseph Stalin. In his autobiography, Cash, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee wrote, I was the ace. I was who they called when the hardest jobs came up. I copied the first news of Stalin's death. I located the signal when the first Soviet jet bomber made its first flight from Moscow to Smolensky. Smolensky. All We all knew what I listened for, but I was the only one who heard it. One source, however, has since debunked that statement to a degree. While Cash was involved in some way, the idea that he alone decrypted the transmission confirming Stalin's death is likely an exaggeration. In his book, The Man Called Cash, biographer Steve Turner writes, although Cash was indeed serving in the right place at the right time for this message intercept, the singer's account is a bit overblown. The story told by Cash brought a weary cry, or excuse me, a weary smile to the faces. Wry. Wry. A wry smile to the faces of those who worked with him, Turner wrote. Turner quotes one of Cash's fellow airmen as saying, he didn't understand Russian, and if it came in code, we wouldn't have been able to decipher it anyway. <laughs> Cash served from 1950 to 1954. Before his separation, he wrote to Arkansas Congressman Ezekiel Gatherings requesting to transition the work, transition to work for the National Security Agency. Gatherings sent back a typewritten letter saying he believed Cash... Cash's chances of being accepted were favorable. The man in black could, in essence, have been could have been a much darker nickname had the NSA been his career of choice. Then again, perhaps it was secretly. So, Ooh. as he once said, sometimes I am two people. Ooh. Ooh. I'd Love like it. to think that Johnny Cash did a little, did a little uh moonlighting with the nsa what a great cover story i mean i know nationally i'm an internationally known celebrity who would who would guess that i'm a spy he could go to every country on tour and spy he could whoa there's a what if movie what it's a what if movie uh i think today i'd love to i'd love to have him crack the code of the current russian leader and figure out what the heck is wrong with that guy. I mean, that's... <laughs> he would have resurrect him and then send him to the ring of yeah. fire. Yeah. Just like, figure it out, man. There's something wrong with that dude over there. You didn't even uh, get my pun. I mean, an excellent pun. I heard there. the ring of, I heard the ring. Of okay. Fire. All right. I'm sure everybody else will hear it. Good. I'm on yeah, par today with my music. They heard you. And I love, I love that. This is the lead story because. Mm-hmm. People are going to think that, don't forget, he was a Legion member. Um, I just, I have Tourette's. Don't forget he was a Legion. I just said it. I actually, Holly typed that into the chat. Um, Johnny Cash and his father were Legion members. I'm remembering your conversation with Jeff Stouffer, who knows everything about everything Legion. Uh, so his father was a Legion member. And I believe the post that Johnny Cash was in was mm-hmm. named after his johnny cash's father but that post no longer sadly exists isn't it weird that great posts with interesting roots a lot of them are gone and then Mm. some that are just a plain number they're not even named after they're like they're like thriving like my posts we're not named after anybody we're just location hollywood sure just hollywood post 43 and it will always be my post is named after two folks two 
too. Yeah, World War World War One veterans. Yeah. yeah, couldn't decide. It was a tie vote. Dyer Gunnell. Well, they were both area local veterans. Um, yeah, I'd have to double. I'd have to double check on on the history portion of that. But to my knowledge, they're both World War One veterans who were were killed in action. Who were within if the I local you, area in the community. If I were you, I wouldn't waste your time looking up. Give David Wallace some homework. <laughs> He's giving me so much homework. Goodness. <laughs> well, you, you can give it right back at him. All right. This is exciting because today's we have a music theme today and it was accidental. I assigned this opening story before I even looked at the rest of the show. Amazing. Serendipity. Right. Today we'll be joined by two Vietnam veterans. Welcome home. Mike Spotswood and Doug Bradley from Cup of Joe Radio, a veteran-focused radio show created to help veterans with PTSD through the healing power of music. We'll be right back with Mike and Doug after the break. Raising money for your American Legion programs has never been so easy. Terry Lynn Fundraising offers customized fundraising programs, dedicated support, discounts and incentives, and premium products for your members to sell. We're talking delicious nuts, confections, and snack mixes that will keep your supporters coming back for more. You can see how simple and effective Terry Lynn can be to use for your next fundraiser when you request a free tasting sample at terrylynn.com al. Check it out and get ready to have the most successful fundraiser yet. Visit terrylynn.com al. If you were stationed at Camp Lejeune between 1953 and 1987, you and your family may be victims of toxic water poisoning. Cancers, birth defects, deadly illnesses have all been linked to the contaminated water. With passage of the PACT Act, the government is ready to be held accountable. You could be awarded financial compensation for your suffering, but you must act now. Get your free case review. Call True Law at 833 833- 686-4242, 833-686-4242, or visit justicecamplejeune.com slash TAL before seeking any legal representation regarding the Camp Lejeune Justice Act. Make sure you speak with a department service officer of the American Legion to better understand your rights. Okay, Alphas, we are back and it is cozy in here. We have two guests instead of one. So we're going to have double the fun and get uh, twice the information. Uh, first of all, I want to say welcome home to our Vietnam veterans. And I wanted to say uh, oorah to Mike, spots with there. <laughs> and Doug Bradley, I am not wearing the Michigan hat per your request. Uh, I, I never want to insult our guests unless they're from Ohio. And uh, <laughs> so fighting words, fighting words, man. <laughs> getting it, getting it, getting it going strong. Oof. And you hear there uh, from the the escaped from Ohio is there is Ashley Marie Gorabulja, and she always gets to start out with the first question. I don't know how we didn't flip a coin; it just happened that way. So go ahead, Ashley. Alpha's lead from the front, isn't that right, Jeff? Yeah. Anyway, welcome to our guest. Thank you for being here. I want to start off by diving into Cup of Joe Radio's mission, what you all have continued to do. I know that your mission statement includes the healing power of music and your show is worldwide. And I know that you can access it in tuna.com, but I want to know more about how you got started. What was the inspiration behind it? Well, um, I've been in broadcasting most of my life, and I worked in basically broadcasting in the commercial world, but I also was at the Army War College for almost uh, 20 years in AFN uh, radio and TV. And when I retired, I was bored, and I started out in radio many, many, many years ago. I'm old. <laughs> but back in Atlanta in 1972, I was in broadcasting, I went to broadcast school, got my first, what they call first class FCC license. And I took my first job in Utica, New York, and it was Channel 20, WTR. And having a radio license uh, back, back then, everything was controlled, especially directional stations. So they had to have a first-class engineer on property. So I did a lot of uh, part-time work 
in radio. Matter of fact, I, I worked at Dick Clark's father's radio station in uh, upstate New York. And the funny story is Dick Clark, uh, when he was young, he wanted to be on the radio. And his father said back then AM was the big, you know, AM radio was it. And his father wasn't quite happy about having Dick on the air. So he, I said, I'll throw you on FM for a while. So we all see what happened to Dick Clark. But it was amazing. I worked at that station, uh, you know, off and on, part time in, in television. And I met a, a gentleman named Jeff Moulton, and he stayed in the market for most of his life. And he retired. We're about the same age. And I said, Jeff, I'm bored. And he said, Mike, he said, you've always wanted to do something for veterans. Why don't you start a veteran show? And I said, you know, that's a great idea. And he knew us, you know, have a bad time of PTSD and so forth. And that's where I wanted to gear it towards. I wanted to gear it towards maybe with all my experience and in, in, in with the VA and being in the system for so many years that maybe I could, uh, maybe I could uh, help people not reinventing the wheel. Maybe I could help veterans out. And I love rock and roll. So that's why I started doing it. Then I met this guy named Doug Bradley. And he Ooh. brought <laughs> Doug Bradley. <laughs> and he brought it, he brought it home. Seriously, he really brought it home. And he has a background. And I've yet to find a question I can ask this guy, right? About any song. And he knows. I mean, he knows, he even knows who the grandchildren of these people are. I mean, he make a joke out of it, but he's he's fantastic. And I've, you know, I've kind of used him as a mentor. He's on the show every week. And we picked up a a, a fantastic VSO, veteran service officer, named Jason Murray of Franklin County, New York, that 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 lives this stuff and he's uh, he's fantastic and we do a big segment on every week on veterans legislation what's happening with the va uh, you know we, we talk to people that are that are you name it if they're walking the Adir adirondack trail to, uh, if they're if they're playing pickleball if they're playing golf service dogs we we hit everything we talk about people how they're coping with life how they're getting by with their ptsd and uh, we're, we're having a, we're having a blast doing it Outstanding. Doug, do you have anything to add? Well, I think, uh, you know, for you youngsters, um, probably the 60s might seem like, you know, um, an, another lifetime. But, um, you know, um, music was just so essential to who we were growing up. It was a way we distinguished ourselves as a generation and, and separated ourselves from our parents. And um, so music was in our DNA. And as, as Mike alluded, Back in those days, uh, AM radio with a top 20, top 40 format was king. And we all listened to the same music, you know, whether you stayed or whether you served or whether you participated or whether you protested, we all had the same soundtrack. And it kept us connected to folks uh, back home. It kept us connected to one another in Vietnam. And it, it helped some of us to get back. And as you guys know, one of the sad legacies of that war was the less than welcoming environment that Vietnam veterans found in America for a variety of reasons. And what we found, my buddy Craig Werner and I, who was the chair of Afro-American Studies at UW-Madison then, was that when we asked the vet what their song was, you know, and not, you know, did you kill anybody or how bad was it? Did you lose a buddy? But just, you know, what was your that the floodgates opened because they hadn't been able to talk for 40 or 50 years when they could talk about a song, they got back home in some ways. So that's how Mike found me. And, and just the fact that I was so committed to the way that music was a, a way to both connect and to explain perhaps, uh, express and to heal, that it seemed like a natural that uh, we would team up and, uh, and try to do this on a weekly basis. Well, that is outstanding. Um, uh, Ashley's having issues with her dogs. So <laughs> they are. Hey, Ashley, I, have to, I got Truman. Truman's my service dog. So he's, uh -oh. he's here. He's watching. Okay. <laughs> so it, let's let's talk about this, the, the format of your show, because I, I know you do interviews as well, correct? Yes. So yes. How's, the, how's the flow of the show? What are people going to get? Well, you know, the music has so much to do with it, and Doug can attest to this. And it's almost like writing a book to a degree because you're taking people highs and lows. If you can understand, kind of taking people in highs and lows and you gotta, you gotta blend it so people will stay there. And one thing I found out about being in radio and TV all these years is you gotta be careful about their segments because 
if you have a talk segment in or, or a guest in there, people lose interest after three or four minutes. So we, you know, you kind of balance. Not with you guys. Yeah. Not with you. You got to you. You you kind of balance that out, you know? And it just, I know you're just feeling, it's a feeling, it's a flow. And some of the music's so important. And uh, like, like Bruce Springsteen, Brothers Under the Bridge, I relate to that. You know, I can really relate to that because I was almost there at one time. I came so close to being a brother under the bridge. It's unbelievable. And then the younger veterans, the, the Gulf War veterans, uh, Jason, one of his favorite songs is Five Finger Death Punch, Wrong Side of Heaven. And you ask yourself when you're in combat and you do take lives and you say, how am I going to be judged someday? I mean, all this stuff. And, and I think Doug told, uh, Doug said something one day, and I think it's so, so simple analogy is we all have our own, people with PTSD all have their own PTSD. My PTSD is not your PTSD. And there's so many factors that's so complicated. And that's what we're trying to get through. You know, I, I, all of these years I'm trying to say, well, what is PTSD? And I looked out the window the other day and I seen a storm on, I seen a storm on the horizon. That's what it is, because you don't know what day you're going to get. You're going to get a sunny day. You're, you're going to get a day that's filled with storms. Is, is your heart going to be broken that day? Or are you going to be, are you going to be uh, angry or whatever? It's, it's a very complex thing. And I guess a lot of us, I think uh, Mission of Cup of Joe is just helping people stay in, and don't take this wrong, it's on, on the right side of the grass. Stay on the green side of the grass. And that's, that's our mission, I feel. Yeah, it's, it's not gloom and doom. I don't want you guys to oh, think. No, that's no, right. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, Mike is an old, he's an old radio guy. And as you hear him, if you go over three minutes on a segment, he, he, he kicks your ass. I mean, he just, he, he just <laughs> knocks you off. Maybe we don't have as much fun as you and Ashley do, Jeff, but um, you know, uh, we try to, we try to lighten it up a bit, but it's mainly, it's mainly the music. Mike is, uh, he just puts together an incredible set list from week to week. Sometimes we have thematic things. If it's if it's PTSD Awareness Month, or if it's Women's History Month, we'll get a lot of women vets on, um, musicians uh, uh, or uh, and or ex service women, and talk to them. So we'll have some of that. But it's really it's it's the music that drives the program. Right. Right, I have not, two, I have two ahead, quick questions before I hand it back to Ashley. Um, Number one, neither Ashley or I enjoy coffee. We don't have to drink a cup of Joe to listen to a cup of Joe, do we? No. No. Oh. My wife, my Thank wife, you. my Goodness. wife all starts to, my wife all starts off because Jimmy Buffett, Margaritaville is the first song we always play. So, so we, can, we can have margaritas? Oh, yeah. She has, as a matter of fact, she's having a strawberry uh, daiquiri this week because we went to strawberry fields. We just visited the Beatles and, and you know, the and, uh, uh, we went on a Beatles tour in England, so it was fantastic in Liverpool. So she says she's got to have a strawberry daiquiri. So she drinks the daiquiri. I drink the coffee. But, you know, it's, you know some of us veterans, uh, PTSD and booze don't mix. So I'm the coffee right. guy. I love it. Okay. And then because you mentioned one of the things you talk about are people's favorite songs. And you're in the business and you do this every day. Did you have a favorite song? This wow. is for both of you. From when you served. Yeah. Um, well, you know, of course, uh, the book uh, yeah, that I co-wrote that Rolling Stone named the best music book of 2015, we got to get out of this place. I mean, the song says it all in many ways. It's, it's, it's a funny story about how that was not intended for the animals. Um, you know, Barry Mann and Cynthia Wilde wrote that for the Righteous Brothers as the follow-up song that you've lost that love and feeling. It ends up becoming the animal song and, and a hit. But it just, you know, the thing about Vietnam was we went over, we didn't go over in units. We went over one at a time and we had a Dero state, 13 months for Marines, 12 for Army, that you knew the day you got there if, you know, thank God and then knock on wood, if you lived for 365 days or longer, um, you'd get back home. So that the notion we got to get out of this place but I also have to say that since I've been home and I've interviewed so many vets and I've been working with vets for the 50 years I've been a veteran, that um, What's Going On by Marvin Gaye, both the song and the entire album, which is one long song about his brother Frankie Gaye's experience in Vietnam and his, his view of America when he got back home is a standard for me. So. I took two. Sorry, Mike. I, I named two <laughs> songs. You named two songs. You got to pick a favorite. 
<laughs> All right, Marine, you have a. Oh, uh, that's tough. That's tough. You know, you got to go. This place is absolutely fantastic. I love this. One song that pumps me up, and it's called Me the Breeze, Leonard Skinner. That's a, I love that song. And, but, you know, back in the Vietnam era, there's so many really good songs. Mamas and Papas, love them back in the day. California Dreaming and all that stuff. And uh, kind of, you know, kind of brought you back to the States. But it, it's, there's so much good music out there. And uh, it's interesting because I went to a hardware store the other day and there's two young guys in their, in their late 20s. And the guy said, oh, your cup of joe. I have my cup of joe t-shirt. I said, oh, your cup of joe. He says, I want you to know something. He said, we may be young guys. It's funny. He says, we may be young guys, but I'll tell you what, music was nothing like the 60s and 70s. And I think a lot, even today, a lot of the young people are listening to that era of music because it, it's just, it's kick ass back in the day. You're, you're reminding me of uh, uh, Good Morning Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, really. Has that ever been a theme? Has that ever been a theme for one of your shows? Like all the songs they play on. Uh, well, we play. Vietnam? We we play that. Uh, Virtual Sun is their intro, and you'll hear basically that. You know, Good Morning Vietnam. So, yeah. and, and also, and uh, uh, matter of fact, a lot of people don't know that Pat Sajak, you know, was um, as a DJ in Nam. AFNVN. Oh. Right after yeah. Adrian Cronauer. Yeah, right after he, Adrian Cronauer. He took the yeah. Don Buster show after Cronauer. The Don, the Don Buster show was king back in the day. But that's a good idea, uh, Jeff, because, you know, there's been a lot of really bad movies about Vietnam. Uh, any, m most Vietnam vets will tell you that. Um, but there's some, some of the films have good soundtracks. They might not yeah, they be know. totally accurate as uh, regarding what went on, but the soundtracks are not bad. Right. So that's a good idea to do that some week. All right. <laughs> All right. Looks like uh, the dogs have taken a, a break. Who let yes. the dogs out? Yes. Uh, yeah, they're protect they are, they're protecting her. Yes. Oh, they're, they're security. They're running security right now. <laughs> um, so I have a comment and also a question. Have we ever put together like top lists of like um, first wave of 9-11 veteran music choices and second wave of post 9-11 veterans music choices? I just think that like, I think that would be interesting because there's, we've got what a 20 year war, right? Yes, we've yes. multiple generations have and could have served during this time frame. And it'd be interesting to see what the trajectory of music is like. Would you have any predictions or anything that, that you would recommend that would be like symbolic of uh, post 11 era veterans? Um, Mike's probably got something to say. It, you know, it's interesting. We taught a class based on our book when we were researching the book. And um, the uh, the kids that come into the class, some of them were born like the late 1990s, um, mm -hmm. now early 2000s. They, they could be the Peloponnesian War uh, with, with Vietnam, but they know the music. They know the Doors. They know Hendrix. They know the Beatles. They know the Temptations. They know Merle Haggard and Johnny Cash. Um, you know, the Supremes. So um, it's it's interesting how that music has a staying power. The two TAs in our class, what's great is when you teach a big class, you get teaching assistants that run the small groups and help, you know, grade the <laughs> grade the students. And we had two TAs in our class. One was a, both Marines, so Mike would be happy. Um, one, a, one, a, one a black guy from Brooklyn and a white kid from Minnesota, uh, both post 9-11 vets. And the students would ask them what their soundtrack was like, getting more to your question, Ashley. And um, they don't have a shared soundtrack, as you can imagine, because the way the technology changed and with MP3, and uh, they just mm -hmm. put on their headsets and got themselves jacked up in ways they wanted to do it. But I do think you're hitting a really interesting notion when you think what I've, all I've seen is some talk of, uh, you know, the Gulf, the Gulf War, and then contrasting that to Iraq and Afghanistan. And, you know, Alice in Chains and The Clash and Metallica, some of that stayed on, especially during that first early era. But then after that, like Drowning Pool and, and just some of the other stuff that got going, it, it, it sort of, well, you know, it's the way music changed. It became more of a commodity than an art. And, people could make their own music too, or put their own set list together. So I think, I think you're really onto something because there's something distinctive, I think, about 
what Iraq and Afghan vets listened to and what worked for them. But um, I don't think that's been documented yet. There was one book a woman, Lisa Gilman, wrote um, about the about Iraq war, but she only interviewed like 30 or 35 vets. I mean, we interviewed over 300 for our book. You need to go deeper. Um, so I, th I think you're onto something. This might be something mm -hmm. you and Jeff could do, and I'd be glad to help. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, yeah, again, it's probably not part of your show. And what you mentioned uh, about the shared music experience, I don't mm -hmm. think we've had that since uh as a 90s late 80s come of ager wow. um since mtv like we right i w all my friends knew all the same songs it didn't matter the genres um the mtv generation was a genre this list um time except for country they they left out country right. um but it had all the genres you could go from metallica to Michael Jackson, Pat Benatar, Billy Joel, Run DMC, in the same hour on MTV, and it was um, I, 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 I don't think we have that anymore. Everything's a, a much more personalized right. uh, experience. And uh, I know, um, Mr. Haskins, you have some uh, thoughts on on that personalized experience with uh, social media. You you guys use social media and. And you have some thoughts on how we all can use social media better. Is that correct? Well, what I what we've been discussing is uh, even putting Alexa in the Legion post and the VFW post, so you can hear Cup of Joe, so you can hear, you know, your your podcast and things like that. And I think, you know, I, I wrote the Legion a letter about seven eight years ago, and that was my big concern was back then. A lot of the post commanders, and a lot of us are Doug's age and my age, and a lot of them didn't embrace, I shouldn't say didn't embrace social media, but didn't really know the power of it. Because social media is so very powerful. And I think that transition has been going on. I think, I think the legions, the VFWs, all the service organizations need to understand the power of social media and how it affects everybody. And also it changes within the VA and the VFWs bringing families in, connecting more. And that, that's an ongoing process. And also, I also like to say, like Doug was saying, it's not all doom and gloom in our music because there's a lot of veterans that listen to us that, that don't have PTSD or whatever. They just like the show and they like the comradeship. I had a veteran tell me the other day, we're, another thing we're working at is we're gonna to try to get on AFN. We wanna get on AFN. So AFN, anybody out there listening to us, <laughs> hey, but but the deal is, somebody told me the other day, and it's the truth, Doug could even probably mention this also, if you've been in the service yourself, is once you leave the service, somebody says, it's like being getting a divorce. And it shouldn't be that way. We should still all be connected. Even though you're out of the service, you served, your brothers and sisters are still serving, you're still people in the next generation, but we, we need to really feel that connection and we need to share the information. Once you get out, because it's important, that we were in service organizations and things like that. Because the bottom line, you know, when they go to Congress or whatever, where are you? That's what we need to do. That's that's my big belief that we gotta share that. A matter of fact, the first year we were on the air, I was so blessed to have Terrence Hayes. I don't know if you know Terrence Hayes, he's a press secretary for the VF, excuse me, for the for the uh, Veterans Administration. And uh, he's a press secretary. He was on our show for a year. And we talked about this and, uh, and and it was so good to have him there and bring that element into the show. So, and it's it's tough. And you're talking about the music, you know, we, I, I wanna play more music of the Gulf War vets, the 30 years or 20 years, but it's tough to integrate that. And we're trying to do that all the time with playlists and so forth like that. And uh, even my wife's like to play a little country here and there. We throw that in, but you know, it's a lot of music today. Veterans music is coming from the countryside. So, you know, we, you need to bring that in there. So it's a, it's a constant mix, it's constant stirring the pot, right, Doug? And see what we, can, what we can do to bring more to the veterans, if that makes sense. You got a follow up on that, Ash? Well, she's Are thinking you, about it. I'm, I'm thinking, I, but you. I'm 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 worried about Super Producer Holly because now we're gonna ask about music and 
you know, we don't have the budget for royalties, so I don't know what we're going <laughs> to, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, but you're on radio. So do you get that, that free pass well, because you're on a, radio? Well, that's the reason we are, we're with W, uh, uh, RFZ because they do have the license. Yeah. So in other words, I create, I'm a, a we are uh, program creators and we create that and we edit it here. Then we, we ship our product out to reach across America and also WRFC radio. And they rebroadcast on TuneIn, iHeart, and all the other platforms. So, well, Can you tell me a little bit more about the um, partnership that you have with Reese Across America? Yeah, a matter of fact, this is kind of uh, my daughter uh, built a house up in Maine, and I'm up in Maine, and I'm, I'm looking at the newspaper. And they, this is amazing. There was a Marine that was killed uh, in what we call ITR. It's, it's after boot camp. He was getting trained, I think, for artillery or something. And he had a training accident, and he died. And Maine's not a very big state. And they flew him into Bangor, Maine. And they took him from Bangor, Maine, I think about 120 miles up the road to some small town. And the highway was lined with people with veterans. That just blew mm -hmm. my mind. I mean, it blew my mind. And so... Uh, and there was a story on Reese across America. So I called Reese. I said, you know, I'm doing Cup of Joe. And I said, this is, this is amazing. You know, how, how the, they support the veterans up here. And uh, uh, Susan Patton was her name. And she's one of the uh, directors up there. And it's strange because we were going, they're building a new national cemetery up there. And my wife and I were pulling into that. And she was pulling out. She looked at me and I looked at her. She said, are you Cup of Joe? I said, yeah. She said, how about being on our program? So that's how it all started. So it's been, it's been a good partnership. You know, it's been a really good partnership. And they carry us, they carry us uh, twice a week on Fridays and Saturdays, 4 to 6 p.m. And uh, uh, it's been a good partnership. We're, we're looking for more partners. And we're hoping, as I say, get anybody out there that's associated with Armed Forces Radio and Television, you know, look us up. <laughs> also, salesperson, you got to be, right? You got so, always be closing, right? Always yeah, be gotta, closing. Gotta be a, gotta be a closer, right? Because <laughs> coffee in your cup of Joe, coffee is for closers. That's that's that, right. That's yeah, coffee's for closers. Like Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's a good one, right? You might get sued because it's in a, a play in a movie. Uh, <laughs> so don't put that on a t-shirt help us please uh, uh, so we are we're getting to, we're getting towards the latter half of this uh we we did a lot more than uh three minutes so i know you're getting a little anxious but can you i know besides radio you uh you do books you got books you, you kind of teased one of them tell us about your books um well, you know, it's another thing we're talking about um, ways to get back and, and ways maybe to process your experience. And what I found in the work that I did uh, primarily here in Madison and now some of it's gone national was that writing was another way, was another way through. I, I know vets who wrote um, some of their own songs and but also story, memoir, poetry, um, whatever, whatever it was that sort of helped them to process the experience and, and to bring their, bring themselves home. And I, you know, so I, I kind of had to, um, I had to put proof in the pudding, you know, and that was me and my experience. And the first book I wrote was called Deros Vietnam. We talked, but Deros stood for date eligible for return from overseas. Um, and uh, dispatches from an air conditioned jungle. It was just this notion of what was it like in the rear? I mean, here I was 70 and 71, wars winding down, Nobody wanted to be the last GI killed in Vietnam because we're leaving. And um, I'm in the largest army base in the world writing for a newspaper and a magazine and, and hometown stories. So I tried to, you know, it, it's sort of a, um, I guess it's autobiographical fiction, if you will. Some of it's based in, in fact on what happened, uh, but then you have to tell a good story too. As Tim O'Brien says, there's story truth and real truth. So I, I made it into something a little more than that. And that was my, that was sort of my way of dealing with my experience. Then, as you know, as I already alluded to Jeff, is, um, I was always into this thing with music and music and memory. Um, and specifically when it came to vets in Vietnam, so that's where the 10 year journey, we got to get out of this place, the soundtrack of the Vietnam War happened. 
And then after that, we spent about 20 months on the road being everywhere from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland to the Stax Museum of Soul Music in Memphis mm -hmm. to churches to campuses to libraries. We went around the country and we kept getting this incredible response. So I wrote a follow-up book called Who'll Stop the Rain? As you can tell, I love music, <laughs> music titles, um, which was basically about how did this happen? What was it about the music and the response and the audiences and the, the authenticity and truth that's in music that made the tour go so well? Um, so um, I thank you for, for that but, um, and for being able to share that. But it, it's also about what we share and um, what is connected uh, with us and to us with regard to the music and the response to music. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's phenomenal what they're able to do now in, in the medical research you're showing what happens to your brain. Look at Tony Bennett, exactly. guy, guy doesn't recognize uh. his wife, yet he can sing a, a 90 minute set list front to back. Um, so, but he's got such terrible Alzheimer's, but so they're doing a lot of research in this now. So this, this, I'm the, probably never get away from it. That's what Mike taps into with what he does on the show is that music and memory, you know, uh, not always great, but it's, it's, I think how we soundtrack our lives and how in many ways we live it. And um, so that's, I'm going to keep doing that probably until I stop. That's awesome. I have to say, I'm, I'm feeling very inclined to go and review my Spotify playlists <laughs> and also recurate my favorite songs wow. and think about them a little bit more in depth. Uh, there's just there's just so much out there. And I've always said I'm a mood music kind of gal. So this is very refreshing <laughs> to hear different like different decades and genres of music being mentioned here today. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Like, so what's on your up, set? What's on your playlist? What's what do you put? What do you? You know what? I've got a lot of CCR. Uh, Stephen cool. Miller. Band. Oh really? That's all right. Cool. That's great. <laughs> I cool. know. Well, you don't um, know. She probably has a playlist of all wrestling intro music. <laughs> yeah. She's a big not, wrestling fan. You know what? I grew up with that, and that's <laughs> not out of the realm of possibilities. <laughs> um, for some reason, you, all of a sudden, were... John Cena's entry song just popped into my yeah, brain. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know well, you, why, guys, right? you guys did that thing with Milwaukee. I mean, that, that's that Steve Miller country, you know, and he was mm -hmm. he was here at the University of Wisconsin with Ben Sidron and Boz Skaggs. So, <laughs> you know, that, that Steve Miller band, that's that's oh, very yeah. that was uh, my father gave me that CD. That was one of the first CDs he had ever gotten. And he wow. gave it to me. And it was like oh, this. Wow. Entry. What did you play it on? You <laughs> I had a CD she's player. Like, she's like 12 years old. Was... <laughs> I had a CD player. I don't know okay. what she played that thing on. I've wow. had an MP3. I've had a CD player. It's yeah. been fascinating to watch the technology oh, just kind amazing. of just change. Just even never in my to lifetime. Do this right? to a cassette. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I did have a cassette tape. My first cassette tape was Shania Twain. Wow. Whoa. She was my first oh, yeah. concert. She was my first oh, wow. concert. Yeah. Good. See, we try. We try Good to choice. mix a little. Yeah, we try to mix a little country. And and yeah. my wife, my wife used to do podcasting, and and she's on the show now. And oh, Bobby wow. Dylan, she just loves Bobby Dylan, Visions of Johanna. I got, I have to tell her, I can't play it every week, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but we, but we love that. And, and, and we, and we, matter of fact, we got invited out to Bobby Dylan Museum and we're going to, we're heading out that way. So we're going to do an interview with them and so forth. And, and the music's so great. And in, in this week's show, I'm talking about James Brown and, uh, you know, James Brown had a concert in Vietnam when all the. You know, as a real as you know, back in the '60s was a bad time. He said, "You know, my black brothers are over there in Nam. I'm going to go over there," and and he healed. You know, between the whites and blacks, all that was going on. He he paid for his own way over his band. Mm -hmm. Everybody, he paid the whole bill, and he healed. And he healed people, and it's amazing when you listen to his music. And please, 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 and and he played in Nam, and uh, it's amazing. So there's so much there, you know, there's so much there over the time. And that's what we tried to hit. And, uh, and we hit all these different, trying to hit all these different genres of music, trying to mix a little bit in, in the Shania, Shania Twain and all that stuff. But it's fun doing it. You know, we're having a blast doing it. I love doing it. And uh, as long as Mr. Bradley's around as a co-host here, we're doing pretty good, I think. I think James Brown is a, a good example of, 
I, I I've seen this YouTube clip where it's James Brown and Pavarotti doing this. Oh duet. yes, it's amazing it's a genre free thing. And then you know later in his career, he healed again in Rocky yes, Three, mm -hmm. uh, Living yeah. in America. Yeah. Oh, Russians and the uh, Americans came together. Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's what it was a documentary, about. right? Was, yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I got I got another really no, quick. That was three or four. Was that four? That was four. 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 Yeah, the I alphas got... were on their keyboards. Slow down. Uh, it's Rocky Four. Rocky Four. <laughs> I got another really quick story I'd like to tell you. My wife. Please. And I, yeah, last year we were in Italy. We went to Monza. I I, I love F1. And uh, I got one of my dreams answered. I, I did go to Monaco a few years ago. It was fantastic. But we went, we went to Monza and we stayed in this hotel. And that's where all the F1 drivers had stayed. It was like two weeks past Monza. And here's this huge picture on the wall right next to my bed of Mario Andretti, right? And I love Mario Andretti, but he hadn't raced in decades. So I, I Googled Mario. What's going on with Mario? He lost his twin brother. He lost his wife and he lost his nephew all within like a year or two. One was from COVID from his brother. And so I jumped on the computer and I said, Mario, I got emailed him. Right? I said, Mario, my name is Mike Spaz. I do a cup of Joe radio. I understand you had a huge loss in your life. And I said, our mission statement is the healing power of music. Damn if I didn't hear back from him the next day. I got two or three emails for him. So, and then I said, well, listen to cup of Joe. I gave him the link. He listened to cup of Joe. He emailed me, he emailed me back, he said, Mike, he said, I like rock and roll, but you know what's something? He said, I really love, he said, I really love opera and I love all that type of music. So the next week I closed the show with Pavarotti. And uh, <laughs> I said, Mario, this is a special shout out to you. And this press agent uh, uh, wrote me back. She said, Mario Andretti listened to your show twice in a row. That's so much he loved it because of, of what you did for him. So music heals in so many different ways. It, it's amazing. It's, it's interesting you say that you... You like F1, but do you like IndyCar racing? Yeah, that's 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 cool. Yeah, because you you can find uh, Mr. He said Andretti. that's cool. That's cool. You yeah, can find cool. Mr. Andretti at Indy races. Yeah, um, he's everywhere. <laughs> in fact, his niece his niece works for the Legion and is a good friend of mine. Wow, really? That's Mary cool. Joe Andretti Dial. There's a shout out to you. Oh, there you go. Send me things. Send me yeah. things. Yeah, um, is a great guy. He is wonderful. So you if you hang out at the, the, the Indy race with the car sponsored by the American Legion with Chip Ganassi Racing. God, I'm just, I'm with the shout outs right now. Yeah. If, uh, uh, you'll probably run into Mr. Andretti. I'm just, you know what I, yeah, you know what I was trying to do. The race. Okay. Shirt, I'm the wearing race. the, I'm wearing the jersey. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I didn't even plan that. I didn't, you know, I didn't plan this either. But, um, <laughs> <You're the second laughs> Hey, it's all a big family here. What can you say? Right? <laughs> so maybe we will maybe we'll see you at a an indie race. There yeah. you go. Try to make that. That's great. Know. That would be awesome. We can cross promote and yeah. Yeah. That's that's all that's all brain power above me. That's that's well, super producer Holly pulls stuff together like that. Let <laughs> me let me uh, uh say something to you. Is yes, we sir. do this for the VFW too. How about send us a 15 second or 30 second clip? promoting your show in times and we'll play it every week in cup of joe radio that's what we're all about holly can we do that i i feel her nodding even though she's uh, <laughs> oh she typed she it's typed yes, yes. yeah you... that, that would be great because that, that's what we need to do you know yeah. you got a great right. show yeah well i'd like to thank both of you for being on here for spending more than three minutes um i didn't see you get antsy so i i hope you had a good time and again, welcome home to you and all of your Vietnam veteran brothers and sisters. And uh, thank you for that. And for the alphas out there, we're going to have a little chit chat about these two when they're not on camera. And I may even switch hats because <laughs> <laughs> he won't be here to tell me not. To. No, so alphas, no. We're going to get we're going to get to all of that again with you right after the break. American values and patriotism. The American Legion advocates for upholding and defending the United States Constitution, equal justice and opportunity for everyone, and discrimination against no one. Youth education, responsible citizenship, and honoring military service by observing and participating in patriotic and memorial events. 
We are veterans strengthening America. We are the American Legion. All right, Ashley, do you have any uh, takeaways from our gentlemen, their, their quest to heal through music? So I think between Mike and Doug, I'm very inspired. You know, I've met a lot of folks who love music, but these two are in a category of their own, like a league of their own. And that's a baseball reference by all standards. But it's really inspiring to hear their journey through both service and military and transition and how they continue to inspire multi multiple generations of, of service members through music, right? As we were kind of contemplating, I was thinking about what music have I listened to? Like what music shaped me? I think that's an important question, like from a, a cultural standpoint. <laughs> you're welcome. I knew, I knew I could fit that word in there for you, Jeff. And um, you're welcome. Yes, and you're welcome. So it was interesting because I was talking to them a bit about Spotify off offline and how Spotify will make daily mixes. And I was telling them how I have anything from Cab Calloway to Billie Holiday to Frank Sinatra to Chet Baker to Lizzo to Dojo Cat to, you know, Run the Jewels. Like, I mean, all of these different artists. And I thought, what would be really the, like, what would be the, the songs that will resonate with uh, post 9-11 Iraq Afghanistan veterans so for anyone out there who's interested in taking that on as a, a final capstone for your master's project I would reach out to Mike and Doug well, they probably won't they probably won't talk about the post 9-11 because they're coming at it from their experience well but, of course yes so uh, I noticed how you you cherry picked all the cool ones before you were raving about Nickelback. I just wanted to let that. Out I was there. not discussing Nickelback. Let's be really <laughs> clear for everyone out there. <laughs> um, I like I grew up a simple. Plan. I get you. I got you. Okay. You're cool. We, you're cool. Yeah, I, I am not cool. List, we're not going to list every band you listen to because you're going to leave off Nickelback this time. And it's not honest. I think this is projection and you really like Nickelback. <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't recognize them <laughs> if they came on the radio, but they sell out stadiums and everybody acts like nobody likes them. Somebody's lying. Nickelback has fans. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> they fill stadiums. We got Nickelback and now reference. we're bringing. No, never I want an alpha brave enough to admit. And I want you to send a voice recording that says, actually, I kind of dig Nickelback. And send it to Tango Alpha Lima at Legion.org, and we will play that voice clip. Maybe I, I don't. I'm not in charge of those things, but I will lobby for you to play to have your voice played, admitting that. Be sure to use your name and post number. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm fascinated to know what karaoke Nickelback song is your go-to. So, oh, she add wants that it? in there. I want to yeah. know. I want to know. You say it one more time. I want to know. Is that your go-to? No karaoke you want to know no do you want to know what my go-to karaoke is not particularly i want what i want to know is <laughs> <laughs> Bohemian rhapsody by queen okay there you go of course it is because it's a really long song and you get to be the center of attention a little bit more than everybody else i would hundred percent have guessed that hundred well okay 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 uh we are we're guess what we're getting to I don't it's know if it's time. your favorite, but it's my favorite. I think it's Holly's favorite. She gets mad when I blow the smoke away before we fire because it doesn't make any sense. Um, things don't make sense sometimes, Holly. It's visually, it's cinematically. Yeah, it is. Uh, we are here. We go. We are ready. We're going into rapid fire. All right, first story is veterans poised for biggest cost of living increase in 40 years from the military times. Veterans could see their benefits boosted by the biggest margin in four decades after Congress on Thursday finalized plans to guarantee the veterans checks see the same cost of living boost as Social Security payouts. Uh, federal officials aren't expected to announce the Social Security benefits adjustment until mid-October, about the time that this will play. Earlier in the week, nonprofit Senior Citizens League predicted 
a cost of living increase of about 8.7% for 2023, based on inflation data through the first eight months of the year. If that estimate is correct, it would be the highest annual increase since 1981. The 22 cost of living adjustment, the 2022 cost of living, I think this should be 1981. The 1981 cost of living adjustment was, uh, nope, 222, 2022. Cost of living adjustment was 5.9%. For a veteran receiving $1,500, as an example, in monthly payouts, that level of increase would mean about $130 each month. This is a big, expensive bill. Um, is it a great investment, Ashley Marie Gorbulja? In America. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Veterans benefits post biggest cost of living employees. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. Come at it from a veteran's perspective. Wow, you're really, you're really doing it today. Wow. <laughs> Using all of my words. Oh. You know, there's a song that goes, take my breath away. You're just, you're doing that for me today. Just so much, so much parody and hilarity, <laughs> okay. sincerity, and serendipity. Other itties. All the itties. <laughs> Itty bitties. Except the ones we can't say. <laughs> That's the ones we can't say. The ones we can't yes. say on a PG rated show. That's correct. Wow. So I digress. <laughs> Social security, man. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I think this is, you know, for those who are going to directly benefit, awesome. You know, uh, if it's going to be an increase of 8.7%, that's, that's, that's wild. Like I, I barely see like percentages over a certain point, but this is almost. Well, last year's they considered big at 5.9. I know. It so... was a big deal. That was a big deal. And now it's going to be another 8.7. That's. Mm -hmm. I also that's find funny. it extremely odd that it takes. I mean, what this was the estimate. If the estimate was correct, the article says it would be the highest annual increase since 1981. Why? Why are we going to have like 30, 30 plus years for people would be like, oh, maybe we should adjust for cost of living. Like, why does it take so long? They, they do adjust for cost of living. They're saying they, it, it will be do. the biggest. It will be the biggest increase because it has to do with inflation. And trust me, we don't. Oh, want I understand. OK, I misunderstood. So. And now I'm curious what the previous was. It just, the Interesting. 2022 is okay. 5.9. Uh, we don't want inflation every year. That would suck. Um, yeah. And I think what's going to happen, gas prices are going to go down, but we're going to get the benefit of this inflation cola. And I don't think they ever go backwards. That would be, that would, that wouldn't pass Congress, I don't think. So I, I, I once heard somebody say, that the the better the veteran benefits, um, they do they do benefit our our warriors, but they also benefit the economy in a sort of a justified earned stimulus to the economy. That that uh, for some people who have regular jobs or whatever, th that's just spending money, their 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 VA benefit, and that's one hundred and thirty more dollars that is going to go to beer or something. I don't know. But um, hey, that's it. That, there's American brewers making American money off real Americans who are enjoying that American beverage. So I think you left part of yourself in uh, Wisconsin. Oh, you kidding me? I'm from Michigan. Yeah, you might we have make, left a piece of yourself there too, bud. I don't know who bud is. But so I think that I think that this is it's a great uh, economic stimulus as well as compensating especially the people who really rely on this right as their income uh i i, I think it's i think it, it will help 130 dollars ain't no joke that's probably the increase it's the increase of my insurance actually with my new vehicle so i'm going to get insurance paid for by the government now thank you so much uncle sam uh are do you have any other thoughts on this or are you kind well, of limited um not so much limited i think it's you know just you know just being mindful of you know 
you're, you know, doing social security payouts, having a cost of living boost, you know, et cetera, and all the other things. Just be mindful. <laughs> be mindful, people. You're not alone, America. I had no idea what she just said either. It's cryptic. <laughs> it's cryptic. All right. We're going to move on before people start really pulling their hair out. Um, yes, we're going to move on and help these people. Right now, we're going to go to rapid fire number two. We're going to talk about somebody who is a number two, according to somebody I heard speak earlier. House candidate J.R. Majewski on disputed record. His, his response was, it's classified. I should say that, but I should oh, come no. up with some stories. An Air Force veteran running for congressional seat, where? In Ohio. Spent much of his time on the campaign trail, invoking, invoking tough combat missions he was on in the Air Force, I'm sorry, in Afghanistan in 2002. But reporting by the Associated Press found no evidence that Republican candidate J.R. Majewski had any such deployment let alone a combat heavy one, as he claimed. Majewski has a simple, easy explanation as to why his service record doesn't show the combat deployment he often brings up. They're classified. I was in multiple bases in Afghanistan, and the time frame is clear. In 2002, he said at a news conference on Friday, after the Associated Press reported his service record, we flew in and out of the area of responsibility multiple times. It's almost impossible for me to tell you where I was and on what day. That's why my orders are listed as a classified location. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> you put this story in here. Just the... oh. I'm not even going to. I'm it's also two of my favorite targets of humor, the Air Force in Ohio. I and. I just I can't I, I can't even bring this down on upon you because he is appalling on his own on his own self. This first of all, if you had orders that were classified, they you would have physical copies of orders in your thing. They would be redacted and labeled classified. This he's yeah, he's he's trying to yeah. call the Associated Press, who, by the way. I don't know if you know this about journalists. They investigate things for a living. They kind of know what they're doing in this uh, in this realm of life. And he's saying that they're wrong and he's right, or they're a liar and he's now he's now the arbiter of truth. This guy needs to go away. Go All away. I have to say is his campaign manager better have a plan of action and better have some talking points for this individual because. I will tell you, opposition research, taking some coursework, you know. You don't even need it's research. It's too easy. It's too easy to to figure out if people are full of, you know, well, the national two. party. The National Party already pulled uh, like yeah. over a million dollars worth of ads. Sure. Like, he's on his own. And if I was running against him, the only That's thing just, I would, yeah. the only commercial I would run is him saying this. I would put this exact speech. No, I guess you have to put this message was approved by, but that's the only thing I would add. I would just have him lying to the people he wants to vote for him. What a number two for rep fire number two. We can say number two, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can even go <laughs> as far as shiz. I can call him. I can call him. A, yeah. He's a piece of shiz. Uh, but there's I, one thing I've learned. You, you can't do not lie about your military service record. You can shorten is, that sentence. Don't lie. <laughs> don't be a, don't be a number two. <laughs> don't be All a, right. And I think that's how he's going to finish in this race, right where number he should two. be. Number two. Uh, there you go. <laughs> clever, this is, clever, Jeff this, Daly. This was not sponsored by his competition. We are equal opportunity if you you lie about if you uh what do we call it stolen valor if you stolen valor we don't talk about you probably if we come across the story because it, it's just not right and it makes it makes everybody else look bad i mean yeah. i get mad at people that walk up into a store and ask for their veteran discount and if they don't have one they leave that's embarrassing but this is like this is infuriating. You can't be doing some stuff on national stages, touting service record you don't have, 
and then making bogus claims like it's just not and then doubling down it's not it's not kosher it 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 shows a lack of integrity and to me it's like okay don't don't tell me you want to like continue to serve people when like you're just trying to serve yourself sorry not interested next serve next serve yourself at the number two buffet sir the number two buffet you know what i'm saying sounds gross sounds like the public health would shut that down immediately eat that sandwich sir (laughs) okay (laughs) oh on one on one i'd make him a number two sandwich with mayo just to maybe oh he deserves a little flavor i guess um (laughs) let's just leave it at okay moving on listen I've so got our stuff final, to tell do you, have any, do you have any final thoughts or shout outs? You know, I do not today. Okay. All right. I, do not. I, I, I don't have a shout out myself. I, I need, you know what? I need inspiration for shout outs. And I think Ashley would too. Can you please, this email address is so underutilized. Send us something your post is doing. That's amazing. Or nominate somebody else. We're practicing humility. Don't nominate yourself. Um, <laughs> nominate somebody and tell us what they're doing. And maybe then we can find a shout out. If you don't want to email Tango Athelema at legion.org, by the way, maybe you can send it to legiontown.org and publish a story there. They, they love good content. I pull content from there every now and then. I know the magazine looks on there. But for now, I... We just got to go home because uh, Bud's got to eat. It's it's lunchtime for Jay Dizzle. <laughs> okay. Well, on that <laughs> note, don't forget to subscribe to the Tango Alpha Lima podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are consuming your podcasts. Please leave us a review and give us a big old five-star rating so that the world knows how much you love us. Aww. And yeah, that's cute, right? I think so. And if you have a guest recommendation, go to legion.org backslash Tango Alpha Lima and click on the suggest a guest link. We'd love to hear from you. I would honestly, I you, seriously, I, I want to know what the playlist, I want to know people's playlists. Like I'm, I'm a down for it. Like I want to hear it. Karaoke right. song, Nickelback, all of it. Cause Ashley will sing it with you. Cause she knows the words. She doesn't you know what? Screen. If somebody sends me their go-to karaoke song, Nickelback, I will sing a verse on this podcast. No, you will not. I will, just I will do that. it for you, Jeff, <laughs> and our amazing alphas out there because I can't Holly will, you, you know what Holly alpha. will say? Ready, set, and she's going to click the off record and say, go. <laughs> oh, she wouldn't do that. It'd be comedy gold. She would do gold. it as a service to America. Alphas, thank you so much for being here, leading the way in the veteran community, being the best of the best because that's what you are. And we hope to feed that uh, alpha soul every week here on Tango Alpha Lima. And please don't keep it to yourself. Be a leader, share the awesomeness that is you. Also practice humility. Yes, also practice humility, but also know that you're the best. You can do both. By the way, I've told this to other people. If I acted like I wasn't awesome, that would actually be insulting and begging. It's, It's brag bait. Yeah. You know why, Jeff? Oh, I'm not you're the great. best. And then you're the people best. Going, you're so awesome. And no one's what ever going to bring you down. All right. You're the best. Before, she, before she busts earlobes, I'm going to declare <laughs> season three, episode 130. 